Hello, I'm State Representative Bill Hayes from the 91st House District. Welcome to Ohio in Focus. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ohio in Focus, a program that brings state government to you. I'm your host, Mike Ditto. We have with us today State Representative Bill Hayes, who serves the 91st House District, which includes all of Perry and Hocking counties, as well as Southern Licking County and Eastern Pickaway County. Representative Hayes, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for the invite. So Appreciate being here. Of course. Well, we're glad to have you here. And uh, now this is your first term in the Ohio House of Representatives, uh, but it's your third run uh, for the seat. And uh, welcome to the Ohio House. Tell us a little bit about your, your background and, and what inspired you to run for state representative. Thanks, Mike. Well, let's see. In 2006, I uh, kind of took on this uh, task of running for the Ohio House based on a kind of a, a, um, a situation in my Sunday school class of all things. I kind of challenged my folks in the Sunday school class to uh, get involved in their local government. I told them how to run for something. Well, about two weeks later, my son, my son called me and said, Dad, the 91st House seat district is open. Uh, how about running for that? I heard you challenged your class to get involved. So that's how I got started. Uh, after that, uh, we really had kind of gotten my blood. Uh, I became aware of the situation the more I found out about issues. And uh, the other interesting thing about running for office is you have to decide where you stand on the issues. You just don't stand around and not answer the question. That's right. And as, uh, as I ran, I came, came to realize I had to make some decisions about where I stood. And, and once I investigated, I realized some change needed to be made in the way we were doing business in Ohio and became rather passionate about it, quite frankly. And uh, that's why I ran in 06 and 08 and again in 010. Nothing changed. I was the same candidate, uh, but finally the voters decided I was the person to uh, represent them now and I hope in the future. So what in your background uh, has, in your, in your mind, qualified you to be a state representative? I know that you're a, you're a small business owner, but tell us a little bit about your, your family and your, your background. Well, I'm married to my wife, Carolyn. We celebrated 45 years last November. Uh, three adult children, six grandchildren. Um, I taught school for a while back in the 60s. My wife, Carolyn, is a retired school teacher. Uh, my daughter is a teacher. She teaches in Wisconsin. And uh, I have two daughter-in-laws who teach. I've served on two school boards. My son, Scott, has served on a school board. So we have a lot of uh, interest and uh, background in public education. And uh, even though that is the case, I, I do believe that uh, we need a lot of reform in education. and. Uh, the changes need to be made because we have a lot of schools in Ohio that are failing. And uh, so that's the background as far as education is concerned. Uh, after I taught a few years, I worked at Western Electric, uh, which is no longer there, but that was out on East Broad Street in Columbus. Worked there for 10 years, and while there I went to law school at night. Finished law school and hung a shingle out and been practicing as a sole practitioner. I now practice with two of my sons, Scott and Dan, and two other attorneys, Melinda Seeds and Laurie Wells in Pataskala small firm and we have a good time practicing law and a general practice there. Uh, while serving as a law, uh, uh, a local law person there in Pataskala, I was the law director for the city of Pataskala and have also served as a court magistrate in the Licking County Juvenile Court. And uh, it's just been a, a fun time, uh, 32 years of uh, serving the public in uh, the law practice and I decided that this, this is a new adventure. I'm 67 years old, so it's a little later in life. I'm not looking to be a career politician at all, but I uh, hope that my experience and background in various areas uh, will, will be a benefit to the to Ohio House. So you've been a private practice attorney, you've been a teacher, you've served in elected capacities before. Well, what's it like being state representative? What have your first two and a half months or so been like? I, the, the papers have been reporting that we've been uh, moving uh, very, rather quickly around here. What, what's been your experience? Well, that's kind of interesting. When we went through the orientation period, uh, the indication was, oh, well, it, it doesn't start out real fast. It, uh, it's, it's not uh, a hectic pace at all, but uh, this is a little different this year. Uh, it is uh, moving quite rapidly. In fact, it's kind of interesting. Some of the other fellows I'm serving with in the House this time have served before, many of them in the 80s and 90s before term limits came in, and they then ran again this time. And uh, they said, wow, this is different. Um, the, the 
committee assignments were made the first week we were here and we were having hearings within two weeks and bills were being passed within about a month or at least coming to the floor. Uh, so what I'm experiencing I don't think is the typical uh, session of the, uh, of the House of Representatives. I think the 129th is on a fast moving pace, it appears. What are some of the major challenges that you believe are, are facing your district? We've got 99 districts in Ohio. They're all very different. What are the major issues facing your constituents in the four counties that you represent? Right. Unlike uh, many other, it, they're very much the same as the rest of the state. Uh, and it's all about jobs, as you know, and the economy and that sort of thing. Uh, it's interesting, my district is a bit odd in, in shape. It actually kind of surrounds Fairfield County, kind of a backward C around Fairfield County. Uh, the uh, western portion of Licking County, which would be Patascola, which the city of Patascola is not my district, but Etna Township and Harrison Township, Kirkersville, uh, very much like the northern part of Pickaway County. It's a flatland, farmland, but also subject to quite a bit of industrial development and that type of thing, uh, quite a bit happening in the way of development and can happen as the economy comes back. The rest of the district, a lot of it is rural. Uh, Perry and Hocking counties, of course, uh, like where I'm from, I'm from Noble County originally, and it's uh, Hill Country, Appalachia. Uh, but uh, the whole district is in need of, uh, of more work to do. And uh, that's the focus of a lot of what the governor's doing and what this, uh, this session of the legislature is about, is trying to get jobs uh, in Ohio, make Ohio friendly for jobs and uh, make us vital and run it again like we should be. Well, and you've talked about jobs and the first bill out of the House was uh, House Bill 1, Jobs Ohio, which you supported and along with the host of other bills that have already gone through both the House and or the Senate, uh, including uh, reducing the burdens on schools uh, with uh, repealing some school mandates and some prescription drug reform. What are some of the bills that uh, that you've been really excited about getting behind and, and sponsoring and, and voting on this General Assembly so far? Well, Jobs Ohio, of course, I think is a, a great bill. It's going to give us some flexibility in doing business and getting business here and making Ohio more business friendly. And it's more about us having a sign out saying we're open for business. And I think that's what the governor is all about. I think that's what the legislature is about, is to make this place friendly. The other bill I'm excited about is the, the bill that's trying to get rid of all the regulation in Ohio that makes it so tough for business to not only get up and running, but once you're up and running, to keep running without spending all your time answering to the government and providing answers on forms and uh, tax questionnaires and all those types of things. So the, the common sense initiative. The common sense initiative mm -hmm. that's been uh, uh, through the House. And I, I'm expecting that's going to make a great difference in uh, the, uh, the uh, small business people as well as the larger business people are going to be happy to have had that happen to them. It's a, it's a good thing that we've, uh, we've done that. And you represent uh, southern or southeastern Ohio uh, and some of the counties there where they faced uh, uh, particularly even in far southern Ohio, a prescription drug problem and House Bill 93 passed out of the House and is being currently heard in the Senate. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that particular piece of legislation? Well, just listening to uh, Dr. Johnson explain what brought that bill to the floor, brought it to the House uh, and for he and Representative Burke to introduce it. It was based on his personal experience in Scioto County and the things that were going on down there. And he is very passionate about that bill and wants to see it make its way through the Senate as well and to get implemented simply because uh, the biggest dealer in Oxycontin in the, the United States was, uh, I guess, identified in Scioto County. And that just needs to be stopped. And, and uh, I understand there's four deaths a day uh, in Ohio based on not illegal drug overdose, but legal drug overdose. So that's got to be dealt with. And I think that bill is a great move in the right direction. Switching gears a little bit, uh, all of the members of the House serve on a number of House committees uh, on which you're appointed by the Speaker to serve on those committees. Tell us about uh, the committees that you serve on and uh, what you enjoy most about them. Okay. I serve on three committees. Uh, criminal justice is the first one. Uh, that's chaired by a former appellate judge, um, Judge Slaby, and I'm co-chair with him on that committee. And we basically hear all the bills that come before the House that deal with the criminal justice system. And we're hearing a, quite a variety of bills come through. It's amazing the things that, the ideas that uh, come before the representatives and uh, come to the committee. 
Uh, we're dealing with one having to do with uh, definition of uh, vicious dogs uh, and whether pit bulls are to be included in that definition or not. Uh, we're dealing with other bills that are having to do with uh, prison reform, uh, those types of things. Uh, a, a bill dealing with sexting. Uh, just a lot of things come before that committee and uh, we have, I, I can't tell you exactly how many bills we've looked at, but it's been a great, great number of them. Uh, I'm also serving on the Education Committee, and the, you mentioned one of the bills that we uh, dealt with. That was the, what we call the mandate bill. But essentially, that bill uh, came through our committee and uh, dealt with a lot of the things that were dealt with in the former General Assembly, where we mandated that there would be all-day kindergarten. And after it was investigated, it was found that we didn't even have the buildings to put all-day kindergarten in in all the districts, and we certainly could not afford uh, to double the teaching staff in all of our kindergartens throughout uh, the state of Ohio. And so that mandate was removed. The schools can still have all day kindergarten if they're already doing it or if they choose to do it, if they uh, have the funding to, uh, to pay for it. But that bill relieves the schools from that necessity if they cannot afford it. And then I also serve on the Ways and Means Committee. The Ways and Means Committee g generally hears tax issues. There are other things that come before it, but the big bill that's come through our committee and already has passed out and actually has passed out of the, the uh, House floor uh, is House Bill 3. And that dealt with the Ohio estate tax. And it, it called for the elimination of the Ohio estate tax. Uh, and it was amended so that it would not become effective until January 1st, 2013. But that bill has met with uh, different reviews, I will say. Uh, there are those who wish not to see that bill implemented because the money uh, from the estate tax, which amounts to about $300 million a year, uh, that gets divided up between the state, which gets 20%, and the local government, which gets about 80%. And so the government where you live if you die and you're required to pay an estate tax, uh, your community where you live generally gets that money, 80% of it, and 20% goes to the state general fund. Uh, so that's uh, kind of a big deal for some local communities that, that come to rely upon the estate tax. I supported that bill uh, because I don't think you should budget based on who's going to die and when they might die and whether that's good for your community or not. Uh, I supported that bill simply because I think we ought to budget ourselves based on money, uh, not of the dead, but of the living. We only have a few minutes left, but I wanted to ask you, it sounds like you have a, a pretty busy schedule here in Columbus, and uh, that, that's, I think, a good thing. Uh, but I'm curious to know if you could just tell your constituents back home uh, what a typical day is like for you and, and how your constituents can best reach you. Sure. First of all, my aide is a, a gentleman uh, from, uh, I said gentleman, a young man. He's actually a, a, a graduate of Taze Valley High School. Uh, Taze Valley is in northern Pickaway County. Uh, Colton Henson is his name. Uh, you can call Colton easily. Uh, the phone number there is 614-466-2500. And uh, that will get you in touch with me and, and the district, or you can email us and uh, Colton can provide you that information. It's available on the web as well. But my typical day, uh, I generally arrive here early in the morning and I meet with uh, either constituents or other folks that are in Columbus for the day that uh, wish to meet with me and discuss issues that might be involving them. Uh, then on Wednesday, I have a rather busy day. I have a committee at 9 o'clock. That's the criminal justice. At uh, 3.30, we have uh, Ways and Means, and at 5 o'clock, the Education Committee. That's the busiest day of all. Uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we have session at 11 o'clock or 12.30, one or the other. And then uh, we spend time basically with constituents, and uh, I guess I should also mention the receptions that we have either at <laughs> lunch or five o'clock uh, from people who are in town uh, meeting with legislatures, and they usually host a reception for us to come to to enjoy some food and uh, some uh, light talk with them. Talk about the issues, very That's good. Right. Well, it sounds like you have a, a full plate ahead of you. Representative Hayes, thank you so much for joining us here today. It was a thank pleasure, you. of course. And uh, you've been watching Ohio in Focus, the program that brings state government to you. I'm Mike Ditto. Thanks again for joining us.